Good. How did this get turned on? I don't know. It's off. I can see that. Okay, let's go. Homage to the Guru and the Protector, the Venerable Manjagosha. Your wisdom is brilliant and pure like the sun, free from the clouds of the two obscurations. You perceive the whole of reality exactly as it is and to hold the book of transcendental wisdom at your heart. You look upon all beings in prison within samsara, enshrouded by the thick darkness of ignorance and tormented by suffering. With the love of a mother for her only child, your enlightened speech and uh, with six melodious moments. Like the thundering roar of a dragon awakens us from the sleep of destructive emotions and frees us from the chains of karma. Dispelling the darkness of ignorance, you wield the sword of wisdom to cut through all our suffering. Pure from the very beginning, you have reached the end of the ten bhumis and perfected all enlightened qualities, foremost of the Buddha's heirs. Your body with the 112 marks of enlightenment. To Manjagosa, the gentle voice, I prostrate and pray, dispel the darkness from my mind. Oma Rapasanadi, Oma. With all of your kindness and love, let your wisdom's shining light clear the darkness of ignorance once and for all. Grant me, I pray, the intelligence, the brilliance to understand the scriptures, the words of the Buddha, and the words of the masters. And whenever I wish to look upon you or ask of you anything at all, Lord and Protector Manjushri, let me see you without any hindrance. Oh. 
want to do a request for teachings. To fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser, greater, common, and extraordinary approaches. Okay. <clears throat> so is this microphone loud enough, close enough, loud enough? So uh, we're going to take <laughs> thumbs up from Ellen. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes to um, uh, do Ellen um, non-conceptual primordial wisdom. How that? <laughs>
Good evening again. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. That was good. So, um, <clears throat> at some point, uh, I do want to finish um, the uh, part of the Dharma study program that has to do with uh, you know, textual reading of this kind and move on to um, looking at um, some of the well-known meditation manuals. Um, I, don't, I don't know of another group that actually does things this way, um, but it shouldn't surprise some of you that know me that we're doing it this way. But um, I want people um, to have the basics and uh, uh, understanding of uh, the four truths and epistemology and the Mahayana and Yogacara and so forth um, because uh, even the most dedicated non-intellectual yogis were, were still familiar with this material. <clears throat> Because we're we're not turning out scholars um, like uh, um, you know traditional university Western University or scholars um, like from traditional shadras. Uh, we're turning out hopefully well well informed and open minded uh, yogis. That sounds good, doesn't it? <clears throat> So um, after a lot of thought, I'm going to uh, um, add uh, one last um, text um, to the study program. Um, it's the uh, Majjhimaka Lankara uh, by Shantarakshita with the commentary by um, <clears throat> um, Dirk and I talked about doing the wisdom chapter of Bodhichara Vatara with the commentary by uh, Mipam Rinpoche, but uh, I think this has the benefit of um, people becoming familiar with uh, the last great um, writer and scholar um, to go. Uh, from India to go to Tibet, um, along with Padmasambhava, of course, Shantarakshita. So let me say a little bit about Shantarakshita. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he was uh, called um, to Tibet to establish Samye and ordain uh, the first seven monastics. Um, and he apparently uh, taught very fundamental things that we've taught here, like the 12 links and Four Noble Truths and so forth. <clears throat> and he also invited his friend uh, Padmasambhava, who is sometimes called Guru She, um, to teach Mangani Tantra. So, um, it makes sense that we're uh, studying the last of the um, scholar monks, abbots from Nalanda to come. Chandrakshita um, uh, put together a synthesis of the schools that we've been studying. So um, has a fairly a mouthful a philosophical position called Swatantrika Yogacara Vajimaka. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> um, this along with uh, Guru Mshe's approach um, was uh, actually the dominant 
um, way viewpoint or philosophic view uh, and practice view um, uh, in Tibet for uh, hundreds of years. Um, gradually, uh, for reasons that scholars don't totally know that I've read, um, uh, and probably, but probably due to shifting um, religious alliances and so forth, uh, Chantrakirti and um, began to be read, and uh, Shantarakshita um, was not as read as much. And then finally, with the um, appearance of Tsongkhapa, who had a very different view, um, unique view of Madhyamaka, um, Shantarakshita was um, still studied, but not uh, extensively. It really wasn't, um, I'm, according to what I've read, maybe I could be corrected, it was very important uh, for Nipar Moshe's teacher to revive um, the study of Chandrarakshita, and he thought Mipam could do it, and um, many people think he did. So uh, I'm going to suggest um, as the final uh, book it, to uh, uh, the translation um, and commentary. And now I can't remember the English title of it. Maybe maybe Dirk can remember the title on the snow lion. Uh, it, it's remember? the adornment of the middle way, Lama. Pardon me? The adornment of the middle way. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. Lankara's adornment or... As, it's um, uh, Shantarak, adornment, the adornment of the middle way, Shantarakshita's Madhyamaka Lamkara with commentary by Jangon Mipam. That's right. the title. Snow Lion, right. Snow <laughs> yeah. 2005. I have a first edition. So it lets me know I've been at least, at least reading that since 2005. Yeah. Hmm. So I feel I should say something about Swatantrika, Yogacara, Madhyamaka. <clears throat> uh, some scholars say, well, let's call the philosophy Madhyamaka and the people Madhyamikans. I like that. So I'm going to go with that. Um, Swatantra means that um, things, uh, the Swatantrika Madhyamakans, believe that some things could, can be uh, established through independently, independent uh, reasoning. Whereas the Prasangika, as you know, like actually um, say, we, we really have no views, we can't establish anything. We can't say anything um, about uh, how things ultimately work. We can only find, as Tsongkhapa's students and Tsongkhapa said, we, we, we can only find the object of negation. <clears throat> the Yogacara part is uh, basically we're not going to, it, well, it's senseless to talk about anything that we can't know or be conscious of. Is it? So, uh, different viewpoints of Yogacara might sound like very Barclay and idealism is that it's all mind and it's kind of mind stuff. Like if we saw it correctly, we could just kind of move physical objects around or transfer someone's head to another head, kind of like uh, you can on the computer. But I'm not sure Shantarash Gusha um, went along that path or that it. Um, it only makes sense to know to say we can know something if we can be conscious of it. Can it makes sense to say there's something that exists that can't be known. That's his approach. So, and the Madhyamaka approach then is uh, the everything ultimately, as essence is uh, empty of inherent existence. You can't find it as a solid, indivisible, heartless 
independent object. <clears throat> but uh, overall, um, Shantarachita's approach was uh, we have Madhyamaka uh, for the ultimate truth. Um, we have, uh, as Lama Mipam said, we have Swatantrika for the proximate ultimate, and we have um, uh, <clears throat> Yoga Char for the way things um, appear conventionally. <clears throat> So this is a position that um, uh, Mipan Rupshe um, picks up and of course comments on and examines in detail. Uh, I think it's important that people um, uh, read Mipan Rupshe's work, Jumik Mipan, some many names, Jangan Mipan sometimes, um, because uh, writing in um, a century ago or more, a little bit more. Um, he did study uh, at uh, Gillick, uh, Gillick Monastery and became familiar with um, the uh, way of debating, the familiar with the way arguments were put. So um, his uh, criticisms and his comments um, uh, were directly challenged by Gallic scholars and he challenged them. So there was, there was real debate going on. It wasn't just different currents operating in different um, uh, geographical areas that the people didn't know each other. So uh, the fact that people here have uh, read some Lama Sankapa or tried to anyway, um, may uh, begin in the other major texts that we've read then can probably appreciate um, Mipam Menshe's uh, uh, presentations. Uh, he was a, a unique Dzogchen master because he uh, uh, wrote and taught uh, from the unity of uh, views. So he was very interested in um, making uh, Dzogchen and Madhumaka uh, approaches complementary. Uh, likewise, he was very interested in preserving um, uh, Dignaga Dharmakirti's interest in um, epistemology and logic. So uh, he's very interesting. Of course, people know his our Vime or non non biased uh, approach person. In other words, um, he liked to look. Um, at all the different traditions and see their values. But uh, his synthesis of um, the different traditions and of course his revival of the Nyingma tradition is well known. But I think um, as students here, particularly ones that have um, participated in um, the Mahamudra and Dzogchen retreats um, will really benefit from uh, meeting Mipam and work, and this is one uh, uh, on-ramp. Also, uh, like, I really like the introduction and summary by the uh, Padmakara translation group. I can't remember exactly um, the names of the translators. They're not some of the big famous ones. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing now, but um, the introduction is very um, useful. So I say that because I, I do want to finish up talking about Vasubandhu and Stermati um, because uh, I know that we're going to be ongoing with Abhidharma because um, Elizabeth Seema and I are going to put together an Abhidharma too and wade into it more and um, we're just not going to let Abhidharma go away. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm interested in uh, you know approaching uh, Abhidharma from an experiential point of view um, rather than just a classification point of view or, or a philosophic point of view. So I think also reading um, 
Chandrakshita and Nipam will help us with that. My, my um, interest is that people get uh, a wide view of the texts and the traditions um, uh, and we'll do that more in the going over the meditation manuals. Uh, I mean, we could spend more time and some people would be interested in reading through uh, Beacon of Certainty, um, Nipam's Rinpoche's major works, and uh, of course his commentary on the uh, wisdom chapter of Bodhicharakatara, but uh, uh, the only, uh, we've, we've skipped some main scholars like Hong Chempa and, and people like that, and uh, Tisha, but um, uh, people staying around will eventually circle back. Is that okay? <laughs> Uh, Alma Mipam was um, uh, some kind of special person who um, was not recognized, like Milarepa was not, um, you know, a famous tolku or a famous abbot or something like that. Um, he, uh, uh, though, was said to have been able, I think, to memorize uh, texts and learn the alphabet and everything. Uh, they give teachings by like seven, something like that. So he was like, um, actually some kind of uh, Mozart uh, because he was, uh, wrote extensively on um, different subjects. Uh, he actually liked magical practices um, quite a bit, and um, there's a translation of uh, one of his divination texts that was made years ago called Mo the Mo. Does anybody have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I I also take divination fairly seriously, and um, uh, uh, you know sometimes I'm called upon to do it myself. But the thing is, you don't want to ask a Lama for a divination and then kind of say whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to like uh, then follow through. And many kinds of divination, like with uh, um, melongs or mirrors, or just spontaneous visual ones, or with uh, malas and so forth. <clears throat> um, what I'm looking forward to is. Uh, if I can find some better translations of Nipar Mimshi's um, teachings on Kala Chakra, uh, I would be very interested. I think there's a translation from Italian to English that's um, not super good, um, but uh, uh, maybe the scholars among you can uh, find out. Sometimes his translations in uh, PhD dissertations and so forth. <clears throat> you know, finally, uh, people bugged um, Mipam Rinpoche um, toward the end of his life and he said, yes, 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 I'm a bodhisattva, it's true. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I I'm going to Shambhala um, and uh, I won't be back and don't bother me. <laughs> but, uh, that never stopped Tibetans. So there was, uh, there was discoveries, of course, of um, uh, emanations and incarnations, right, like that. So um, we, we just we were, uh, he, he didn't totally escape, or maybe some of his mind streams or activity emanations, um, you know, are still with us, right? <clears throat> but it's it's difficult when people are um, uh, in an incarnation line from a very 
uh, famous auto dictate kind of like Nippon Rinpoche because how can you ever equal that, right? So um, uh, it's sometimes better not to, you know, not to make big claims about being some <laughs> toko someone if you're not also kind of up there. So. <clears throat> So the way I'd like people to make um, the Abhidharma real for them is uh, to, uh, for this next couple of weeks, is um, to approach it in a very simple way as um, uh, sensory awareness practice. <clears throat> Um, uh, I have suggested if people are really interested in Abhidharma from kind of a yoga charm, Svan, Svatantrika, Madhyamaka approach to read Trampurushe's glimpses of Abhidharma. So I think I've assigned that to Elizabeth Seema, right? So glimpses of Abhidharma. <clears throat> So I think I was at one talk or, and that got into a book because Trump purposely didn't write, but um, so, well, what, what's, uh, what's the Abhidharma experience? We would ask that in the old days and he would just say, um, uh, notice how vivid uh, when you're driving the red light is. I used to be kind of annoyed with red lights, you know, like, oh God, wait. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, my experience, like if you just, like you look at it for the very first time, it's beautiful, right? Prince she used to go around with his camera and take um, what I considered at the time really banal photographs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just one of those annoying people and then, then we'd sit in a class and Judith Lee for one of his major students would show the photographs, you know, kind of on a um, slideshow or something. Um, it would be like, one thing I've got to me, like, maybe it was, you know, it still does, like uh, a shell stick gasoline station sign. You know, so, <laughs> it, you know, I, I don't know anything about like modern art, you know, maybe it was some kind of like, um, just, you know, what modern art, you know, just like, just see the sign, you know, don't make it into, oh, you know, it's like, stop the turning everything into ugly or uh, beautiful like that. <clears throat> so um, that would be like, um, the way that we actually put Abhidharma uh, into practice from kind of meditative point of view, not just an analytic point of view, is um, what, what it would be like to have um, arresting experiences, so to speak, where you weren't um, judging um, that's pretty, that's not pretty. It's just very direct moments. So uh, sometimes, um, we have those moments and they can be transformative, right? So I'd like to um, see if I'm making sense from anybody. So I'm gonna stop here for a moment and see if this criticisms, complaints or conversation. Is that okay? <laughs> well, um, I'll, I'm going to say, I guess, that I'm really happy you decided to go with that book because it's, oh. it's one of my favorite books, period. I, I didn't think you wanted to use that one, but I'm really glad you decided to because I, 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 it's a mat to me, it's a masterpiece. I just, I just really love that book. Well, um, yeah, I, uh, um, I tried to do a lot of um, 
you know, prayers and um, uh, I can't make any claims about having direct vision of um, Nipam, but um, doing some of the wonderful prayers uh, he composed, then, but then I thought this would be very auspicious and not, not too difficult, right? Not too difficult for us. Um, rereading the introduction again, I think, um, will help convince me. But um, for those, you know, if, when you get it and you read the pithy um, stanzas by um, Shantarakshita, you wonder like, what's what's going on here? So, uh, but some of you may be able to read it without a commentary or background, but um, it really uh, helps to have a commentary, particularly Nipam um, Rimshes, whose um, writing is not um, uh, the dispin <laughs> disputing style that um, we might see in some uh, authors, but um, more uh, uh, conversational kind of tutorial style. So uh, I think he's fairly easy to follow. So he, he, he's not um, uh, in this in this particular instance. It's it's, it's fairly fluid like that. Um, the uh, beacon of certainty is a little bit more polemical, you know, like that. <clears throat> so it's one of my uh, it's one of my favorite books too. So that's that's uh, easy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think someone's grabbing. <laughs> Thank you, Lama. Yeah. I'm having uh, trouble connecting. I'm not recalling what you initially said about Sautantrika very well in what you then termed uh, proximate, ultimate. Yeah, so Swatantrika um, is like, uh, we, we can say it's legitimate to say some positive things uh, about entities. Very strict Madhyamaka position is like, um, all, we're, all we're saying is uh, empty of inherent existence to everything, <laughs> emptiness itself too, and then uh, some very strict interpretations also leave um, uh, regular appearance or conventional reality just as it is. But uh, that we can't, uh, so we can't really say much about, <laughs> we can't really say much about anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, it's really hard to say anything, really anything positive about anything. Um, and of course, some strict Madhyamakans became, you know, were accused of, of being like nihilists, right? <clears throat> so the, the Swatantrika Sa, position is Swatantrika. Like Swatantrika right. would be like to make an affirmative statement, but then qualify it with a kind of, it's kind of like that. You'll uh, never, you'll never be able to be completely accurate. Um, it's, it's not like the doors aren't kind of red. Um, uh, you know, there's some different Swatantrika approaches. Um, uh, some would be saying they're, they're there's something from the door side that allows us to see it red. Not, not just our eyeball or not just projecting red onto it, but, um, but it's, 
but the swatantric approach is not, we're not saying it's inherently existing that we could find the red in the door, but there are uh, relatively speaking uh, aspects or qualities of the red door that allow us to see it red. Now, uh, Tsongkhapa, um, you know, kind of jumped on things like that. <laughs> so he said, oh, you know, we're just bringing in inherent existence back in the back, you know, um, in the back door like that. Um, what, what's interesting, I just decided about um, uh, how Lama Tsongkhapa, Tsongkhapa actually taught students and what he wrote philosophically can, can be a little bit different, you see, since I studied closely, you know, it's like, um, and sometimes seem very close to Zen, right? So, um, uh, you know, the well-known Korean Zen teacher I studied with, Songsan, um, would, uh, you know, uh, hold up an apple and say, what, what is this? And people would give all kinds of different, um, well, it's a fruit, it, or it doesn't exist. <clears throat> um, uh, he would just shake his head with everything and then eventually bite into it. Okay. So that, that's in a way a very, you know, very Madhyamakan kind of approach, like, all we can do is have direct experience, really. We, we, we can't say anything um, without it somewhat being false. So there's a strong emphasis on not saying anything false, right? Just if you follow through from a practice level, then you, you really have to have the yogic insight. However, um, uh, uh, critics of Tsongkhapa, which include Nipam, say, look, wait a minute, you, you guys are talking about this. So obviously you have a pedagogical slant, so you're making some assertions, right? And also, uh, you know, some people, maybe they're not, you know, instant realizers. And like most people, they have to be, you know, gradually, um, uh, you know, led to see non-conceptual a primordial wisdom like that, right? So it's a pedagog it's a knowing pedagogical tool to um, make some positive statements about phenomena. But the, a very strict kind of Chandra Kirti uh, Tsongkhapa style can feel very bare, right? Because everything's, you know, imputed, you know, and, and um, you know, uh, when I was deep into studying with my teacher, then I was saying, you know, I can't really enjoy your orange juice, right? Because it's imputed. But we can enjoy orange juice, don't you think? Like freshly squeezed orange juice. It's really good. I'm allergic and I still like it. <laughs> <clears throat> Lama Mipa was one of the few um, uh, students of Padmasambhava in the Nyingma tradition that could actually, you know, um, you know, really debate with uh, uh, some of the Gaelic scholars on their own grounds like that. Why does it matter? I mean, it does matter how we talk to ourselves about our experience, and it does matter how we um, communicate to others, right? To teach others, we have to say something. <clears throat> so I've got a Gary Rushi, who is a wonderful teacher that taught, I think, in Minnesota. Um, one of his last books was, You Have to Say Something. But, uh, uh, a lot of Zen is very Madhyamakan that you, 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 uh, you, anything you say will be wrong. <laughs> you guys ready for that? Do you want to straighten Madhyamakan Lama? I can do that. Maybe some of you feel I'm doing that already with you. No, that's wrong. No, wrong. No, wrong. Wrong. 
<laughs> Actually, I'm very Swatantrika, Yoga, Chara, Madhyamakan in my presentation, don't you think? Yeah. It is very important to um, see how our language and our cognitive structure um, both can help us and hinder us, right? So um, if you're just a naive realist, you just accept things uncritically and there's a problem there. Um, if you um, reject all kinds of language, um, you know, you're, you're going to have um, a bit of a problem too, right? So um, I'll tell a little Kalan story. So, um, Sasaki Roshi. So uh, there was uh, a famous Zen master in China. I, I can't remember. Maybe it was Tibet. Uh, maybe it was Japan. I mean, so whenever anybody asked him um, what what Zen was, he held up his finger. Didn't say anything, just like that. Would that have been okay with you? Like <laughs> Americans are kind of funny, like. Uh, we like doing that, but let's say you like you got in a plane, you flew all the way, you know, to Japan. You spent a lot of money, and you know, uh, instead of getting this brilliant lecture, you you were sitting, sitting, sitting all day, wishing for a wonderful Tay show, and the teacher just said, this. sometimes Suzaki so Roshi just used to like, that's it. Do you feel okay with that? Maybe. So anyway, so one of the monks, uh, or young monks actually, got really frustrated with this. So what do you think he did? Yeah, cut off the finger. Yeah. 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 So um, then the master, uh, and the, <laughs> the student said, uh, now what? And the master still, you know, did this. And uh, it said that the monk was enlightened. I used to think those stories were apocryphal. I'm not so sure now. <laughs> Pardon me? It is. Yeah, there was, you know, like, uh, that may be an apocryphal, but um, it, it actually could have happened also. So, you know, thanks. Okay, story time is over. No, any serious questions? <laughs> I'm, I'm being non-serious today, but okay. So the, uh, you know, Mipam was very interested in Abhidharma, you know, once again, um, presenting the teachings as a way to um, uh, our actual lived experience. Um, my term for um, uncompounded primordial wisdom, you know, just our actual lived experience. What is that? So, um, so we not, we're not we're not searching for some uh, uncompounded luminous wisdom somewhere else, right? Not outside our own direct experience. <clears throat> I'd like to draw people's attention. Is there any way you can focus on the table? So uh, Paul Nolan uh, installed this beautiful table just a couple of days ago. So this is the first time I'm using this. It's quite something, isn't it? I don't want to put a brocade or anything on it. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? <clears throat> so, thank you so much to Paul. I'll see him uh, at Sagadawa this Sunday. And I'd like to wish you all like a, um, a happy Sagadawa this month. And, um, some people are going to get up early and take eight Mahayana precepts a Saturday morning. <laughs> Uh, here with Geshe Damchula and then 
you get to go out to a big breakfast, but then uh, you don't, you're not supposed to eat the rest of the day. <laughs> Just doesn't sound appealing, but you're not supposed to do other things. Eight Mahayana precepts is kind of like monk or nun for a day. Could you do it for a day? Yeah, it's just one day, right? So, so Sagadao is a month where we put an extra special practice, of course. So uh, I'll see you then. And I do have an announcement is that um, I've decided to um, uh, give uh, introductory teachings. Um, uh, I have to work out the schedule, but I'll uh, meditate, lead a meditation group again during the week. So I'll be announcing that at Sakatawa, okay? <clears throat> um, I'd like to give a shout out to Andrew Castro, who's here. <laughs> Hi, it's cool, it's good to see you. Yeah, totally, so it's nice. <clears throat> So uh, now we're very lucky, the people that are studying now, um, where you have the second and third generation of English translators. So that, um, you know, we can read, uh, you know, Lama Mipam and um, Long Champa and um, Jigme Lingpa and Wang Chen Nintik things like this, so, but I'm going to reserve that for um, uh, the practice aspect of the Buddha Dharma program. It's possible to read the philosophic texts um, uh, and have some understanding if you're not doing any kind of yogic practice. In fact, that's kind of part of the purpose is um, these texts are written to um, appeal to a populace that's educated, but maybe not doing any Dharma practice or to refute um, or establish um, superiority over conflicting views. So they're meant to be this kind of polemical uh, style, particularly in India that used logic and argument um, because it was very competitive. <clears throat> uh, so it's possible to read these uh, without doing a lot of yogic practice. But when we actually start um, looking at the meditation manuals and um, the um, supportive works around, uh, it, it makes as much sense talking about, you know, it's like it'd be talking about bicycles, but never going on a bicycle ride, right? <laughs> it'd be like reading menus, but never going now we're eating the food, right? So um, uh, I'm hoping by the time we get there, which will be, um, you know, sometime this summer, that uh, people have enough maturity um, to really benefit from the meditation manuals. Um, uh, I think uh, Mipar Moshe was maybe challenged within his own tradition by like, why, why are you writing all this stuff? You know, why, why, why are you bothering to do all this? You know, what, what's the value of study? And, um, you know, he was very clear that um, uh, study and working through this uh, can build uh, tremendous confidence, tremendous confidence, confidence in the view. So um, my experience is when people have done enough scholarship that they have confidence in the view, they do not become discouraged and their progress is uh, deep. When, when we put our progress on how we feel about things, well, you end up with California, right? So, <laughs> so uh, we, we know that scholarly study by itself will, will not reach um, you know, the profound non-conceptual realization, but um, Mipar Murmshe, uh, same way with Lama Sankapa, did feel that um, uh, the intellect was not um, uh, without benefit. And uh, if 
if you get things really wrong from a view point of view, even an intellectual viewpoint, it's difficult to make um, corrections just with um, yogi practice that we needed to combine the two. <clears throat> so now with many of the um, monasteries, uh, particularly like since I've been there, Mindra Ling, um, with um, Pena Rinpoche, um, Nipam Rinpoche is probably the main, with Long Chempa, the main person. <clears throat> if people ever get a chance to go to Mindra Ling, which is near Sarajé, it has this huge copper colored mountain with Gurimshe on the top. And then now it has the big portrait of Pena Rinpoche. Quite amazing. So um, one day I'll return there. <clears throat> They're, um, they're very friendly. So they're, they're doing puja and you can just kind of walk in. It's very nice. Okay, so uh, we need to stop here. It's been very helpful, I hope. Is that okay? Okay to stop? All right. So it's also wonderful. As some of you know, Dirk knows and um, Dan too, to actually uh, meet people in, in the lineage, uh, you know, that, uh, so, is everyone like Lama Sankapa or uh, Yeshit Sogyal, but particularly since Mipa Rinpoche is still fairly contemporary, where, you know, it, it still feels very alive and real and people can tell the stories um, like they're talking about their great grandfather. So it means a lot. Oh, good. Let's finish up, okay. <clears throat> there you go. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land yeah, encircled so by snow mountains, you yeah, are the source so of all happiness and good. All powerful Chambrizik Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Drapa, I make requests at your holy feet. Oh, who lives close to Carmichael? Does anybody here live close to Carmichael? No? Mm, okay. But, oh, yeah. You can give me a ride, yeah. That's kind of out of your way. But thank you. Yeah, I'm, oh, that's sweet, yeah. Greg Robicki has a bike, so I just needed a ride home, so. Uh, the car has been in the shop, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Dharma's very practical, right? So thank you. All right. See you. See you later. Ciao. Om Mahong. Om Mahapasana. D D D D D.